The ministry is in draft, drafting the strategy to roll out the diaspora engagement plan. Now, this is one aspect that we can, you know, take the opportunity and launch uh, communication and engagement with the diaspora to have them involved in the development of that strategy. Um, I know it's not 100 days as yet since the government took office, so we don't expect miracles. So that strategy is now being drafted and uh, being sent around internally in the ministry for review and so forth. Uh, what is your input and your uh, recommendation to the ministry to engage the diaspora even at this initial stage in the development of that strategy? I think it's critically important that, and I think it's, it's, it's a very, very, um, uh, you know, uh, poignant question you've asked. Uh, I think um, there is no strategy without the participation of the diaspora. Uh, you, you know, uh, you, you can't, you know, be in a, in a cave and plan for something that's 100 miles away or 1,000 miles away in our case, right? So, so you've got to involve the diaspora in that strategy. More importantly, uh, the diaspora has um, uh, some key areas of participation in Guyana economy and Guyana society. Of course, job is, is, is definitely one of them. And, and my platform um, seats uh, very comfortably with um, any uh, uh, um, uh, diaspora engagement, any diaspora engagement that, that does not say, "Hey, we need a, we need we need a uh, uh, we need a, a database of all of our Guyanese professionals and, and and skilled people," you know. Now, this is what Guyana Works is all about. Every Guyanese, you know, post your resume, tell us your interest in Guyana, you know, when you would like to come and so on. Uh, in addition to that, I mean, the, the, the other areas of, um, of diaspora engagement in Ghana that are very critical, of course, is investment, tourism, and charity and goodwill. We have never used, in the history of Guyana, we've never had a diaspora campaign or diaspora outreach that, that, that talks to Guyanese about going back to Ghana to visit Guyana. You know, I grew up in a diaspora. I came to the United States when I was eight years old. You know, and I went back to Ghana and I lived for a few years, um, but I've never had a, a, a government official or even a, a government associate um, uh, contacted me about being involved in Ghana at any level. I've been part of so many diaspora organizations and advocacy group. Um, uh, but again, uh, uh, you know, it, it seems that, you know, government seems to uh, want to manage the diaspora engagement from a distance. Uh, I, 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 think, I think those are lessons learned. And I think hopefully the new administration understands the nuances as it relates to uh, uh, engaging and looking at the key areas um, of the diaspora. I mean, India and, and, and uh, Israel, their diaspora is used for jobs. Their diaspora is used for investment. Their diaspora is used for charity. And the diaspora is used for tourism. That's where they get 80% of their uh, of of their tourists. They don't get they don't get 80% of their tourists from anywhere else, but from their own diaspora. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at this stage here, do you how do you think the government should engage the diaspora for the strategy in, sp in specifically? Well, sadly, while we can say diaspora and diaspora and diaspora, there is no diaspora organization, so to speak, that you can say, hey, let's start talking with the government of Guyana. That, of course, is a, is a, uh, a, a you know, a, 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 an issue that I, I think, you know, there's so many groups that, that, that think they represent the diaspora, but I don't think there's any that really do. And, and, and I think the, the administration currently needs to look at key people in the diaspora, build a, a forum, and build the bridges to connect with that forum. Um, there, there, there are some wonderful people uh, in the diaspora who can really make a difference um, from the diaspora and, and helping with that strategy. And the strategy can be, um, you know, a few webinars and a, and, a, and, a, and a, a few emails and a press release and, and, a, and, a, and a desk somewhere. You know, I mean, the diaspora includes every mission. Look, I mean, look at today or yesterday. The American um, US uh, 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 
banking leader were in Guyana. Guess what they were doing there? They weren't helping me and you. They were there to, to sell American goods and services. They were there to sell America to Guyana, to the Guyana leaders. Now, we need to do the same thing. We need to develop a team and, and includes all these missions to go and sell Guyana. You know, we need to sell Guyana first and foremost to the diaspora community. You know, we need to sell Guyana to the whole world, you know, uh, uh, and, and, don't, and don't always have people uh, uh, um, want to sell us what they have, so to speak. So I think um, America's doing what it has to do, and, it, and they're correct. That's why it's, America is such a powerful country, because it sells itself. It goes and sell, actively sell itself. If you go to the U.S. Uh, embassy uh, uh, website, there's a, a bold link that says business. There's nothing wrong with business, you know. And I think I think we have we have to shift our diaspora engagement policy away from from being less political and more business, more uh, engagement, more uh, investment. And 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 at the end of the day, every diaspora person has a thousand dollars to give Guyana. How do we get it? We we get to develop a strategy uh, 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 and a platform ensure that that thousand dollar goes to Guyana. Mm -hmm. So in your communication with members of the diaspora, what are some of the things that are hot on the topic for, in, for investment and uh, engagement? Well, I was, um, I was uh, in 2016, I was the, uh, I hosted the Guyana Investment Conference in New York City. Um, that's where we assembled uh, more than, you know, 250 investors, American investors. Uh, we were selling Guyana then. That was probably one of the few events that was selling Guyana. And, and we brought ministers and so on to talk about Guyana, we invest and so on. And, we, and it was about, I would say about uh, $20 billion in that room. $20 billion were represented, were represented in that room and they were ready to invest in Guyana. Of course, the past administration has no business sense and has no um, uh, strategy to grow the economy. And all that $30 billion added to zero. You know, um, I, I had those Wall Street guys calling me. I had investors who came from outside of the United States to be part of that conference, calling me and, and trying to follow up. I followed up with Go Invest at that time. I followed up with the government and the Ministry of Business at that time. And of course, there was very, very little, very, very little interest. But so, so definitely, Guyanese in the diaspora, they're very interested in investment. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're very interested in moving the uh, level of uh, our economy from a commodity economy to a, to a processing secondary tertiary product. Um, there's a lot of, not only do we have the skills to get it done, but we have the, uh, the access globally to sell some of these products. So I think, I think that the, the government needs to do a lot more listening uh, uh, to the diaspora and, and based, because I mean, diasporas are coming to make money and that is good because when they make money, jobs are created, taxes are collected, the economy grows. So, uh, so they've got to listen to, 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 the, uh, uh, um, to the, the, and I know for sure one of the concerns when it comes specifically to investment in Guyana, and it might relate to jobs also, is, uh, is the red tape. You know, um, everything, you have to go to five different ministries to get the same paper signed and to get this and to get that. And that was brought up by, by American investors who went to Guyana to get their stuff done. Uh, they said clearly that we went to Guyana, we ran around and we left. We couldn't get it done. So I think, um, and, I, and I've heard the current, uh, the co-invest uh, uh, um, CEO talked about one window. I mean, we got to make it one window this time around, you know, where you go and you, and, and, and you, 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 uh, you know, you establish your, your, yourself and your, your concept and your investment and, uh, and, and, you know, you get service from one window and not, and not, not run around. So I think uh, ease of doing business, um, you know, high, ease of being hired in Guyana. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think one of the issue has always plagued Guyana from a, from a, a diaspora perspective has also been corruption and nepotism. 
you know, mm -hmm. so I'm hoping that this administration uh, has learned lessons from past administration and, and kind of ensure that there is a level playing field and there is an opening of, of, of systems and, and procedures that, that, that are fair and provide equity to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, I mean, of course, I can't, I'm not speaking for the ministry, but based on the interview I did, it seems as if they are going to move along that path that Peter Ramsrub spoke about, you know, having one window, because th that's the bureaucracy that existed in the past. And I believe that was a hurdle that, you know, uh, obstacles that people had to face that prevented investment. And I think that's one of the things that they're going to be addressing in this strategy. And um, that's why it would be good to communicate with members of the diaspora to see, you know, how we can reduce all of those, you know, red tape and, you know, streamline the process so that it becomes easier for everyone seeking to invest. Mm -hmm. Travel to Guyana. Um, from your interaction when you, in 2017, when you had brought together, you said it was 250 people in the room there. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what was their uh, idea of Guyana? Because everybody has an idea, an impression of Guyana. Um, what was that idea of Guyana? And what's, what do you think we should be selling to the world? Well, you know, when, when I did that conference, it was under the APNU. Uh, they had asked me to kind of host, um, organize and host a, a diaspora investment conference, um, a Guyana investment conference, sorry. And um, the, 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 and, and, and whether you were Guyanese uh, that was pro-PPP or pro-APNU, there was a sense of newness in Guyana when APNU won, uh, because, you know, it, it was, it, they, were, they won with crossover votes. So both Indians and Africans came together and voted for a party that won. And there was a lot of excitement about, about the possibilities uh, of, of what, um, what could happen to Guyana. I myself was very, very excited. Um, they asked me to do the conference. I did it. Um, a lot of the investors who were there, and it was a paid event. You had to pay $300 to get in, um, to, to get into that conference. And, uh, and, uh, those investors who came, they came with that same level of excitement that there's something new happening to Guyana. At that time, oil was new, um, um, you know, uh, offshore uh, telemarketing was a big, in, is a big industry. Uh, there was a lot of excitement of what's possible. You know, th there were people there who, who wanted to invest, you know, in thousands of acres in coconut, in palm oil, in fishery, uh, in, uh, you know, bringing, um, building hotels, you know, there was all kind of, uh, of excitement. Uh, and what, what their, their impression of Guyana is that it's a, it's, a, it's a fertile ground with bad policies. It's, it's, it's very, there's tremendous amount of opportunities, but there are many, many hurdles to reach those opportunities. And that's a general, general feeling, and that's a general, uh, the general uh, guide for a lot of investors and persons who want to go back to Guyana that, hey, it's a beautiful place. Think about it. You know how Guyana is beautiful. You grew up there and, and so on. I go, out, I go back so many times. And we know Guyana is beautiful, but there's always a but, right? Guyana is beautiful, but I don't get robbed. Guyana is beautiful, but it takes, you know, six years to get an application for, for, um, uh, to do my business. Guyana is beautiful. It got, it's got all these resources, but I can't get the logs out because the roads are stopped doing rain, you know. So, so those are some of the impressions that, that investors, Guyanese and non-Guyanese have about Guyana. You know, the infrastructure is weak. That came up very big in, in, the, in, the, in the conference. That, I mean, if, if I come and, and open a business, I have to build my own infrastructure. I got to build my own roads, my own telecommunications and all that kind of stuff. Uh, of course, crime was a big one, um, the red tape and corruption, you know, that's the kind of feeling investors have. And, and I'm hoping that, that the current administration can really look at these um, stigmas and, and address them and put policy in place to kind of uh, 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 put those fears uh, to rest. If you're asked to do this conference again for this current administration to bring all those people again, because obviously it was a great idea, it had a great impact, it's just that it wasn't taken further to be implemented. Uh, 
if you're asked again, would you be willing to do it? Absolutely. I mean, there's no reason. I mean, I, I have I have some special skills which I think can certainly make that happen again. And um, and there's no reason why an, another investment conference can be possible. In fact, we should be having a, an investment conference every year for Guyana. There, there, there's, there's too much happening in Guyana. And I'll tell you this, uh, my interest specifically would be for our Guyanese diaspora to be more to be more involved in Guyana's economy. At the moment, and, and you would see this, there's a lot of uh, um, foreigners who are going to Guyana, foreign companies who are going to Guyana and taking advantage of what's available. Of course, they probably have more money and more skills and more whatever to, to get that done. But I wanna see some affirmative action, so to speak, um, for our Guyanese diaspora. I would love to see the Guyana government today have a special package for investment by the diaspora because who loves Guyana more? I mean, someone who just want to invest in Guyana, of course it's good and we encourage that. But when a Guyanese invests, it comes with a lot of patriotism uh, in addition to all the other stuff. So I think, um, uh, and we owe, we owe our diaspora that. We owe our diaspora the first jump at any opportunity in Guyana. I, I, I think that's good. that goes without say. I think you'll get the same uh, participation and enthusiasm from these companies again, knowing that in 2017, nothing didn't happen after? Well, I, well, I think investors don't give up. People who want to make money never give up. As you know, entrepreneurs don't give up. Entrepreneurs mm -hmm. try and they try again. You know, they tried then, it didn't work. I'll try again. The opportunities again has not disappeared. Right. The opportunities have gotten actually bigger. Yes. <laughs> More pronounced. Mm -hmm. So um, these investors are going to come back and, and they're willing to, to invest in Guyana. And, and I'm quite sure they're quite aware that um, with the international spotlight on Guyana, certain things are going to be different than the last time. You know, so, um, you know, think about it. I mean, investors are like farmers. If, if you're you got a bad crop, you don't give up and go and find a job. You want you won't plant again, right? Mm -hmm. And you reap again. And you may you might have, you know, five bad crops, but you might you'll get ten great ones, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Salim, thank you once again. Um, so we'll talk again soon. We can you can always come and uh, let's talk about what's happening as you progress about your investment conference, you know, how the website's doing and any other pertinent issue, especially since the ministry is in the process of drafting that diaspora engagement strategy. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure following this interview, I mean, they will be seeking, you know, other input on how to take that step forward as well so that, you know, they can successfully engage the diaspora and uh, you know, coming out from some of your comments as well. So I, I really want to thank you today. Thank you, um, Jennifer. I uh, really appreciate the, the time and the effort that you make in connecting the diaspora with Guyana. Still, you know, I think this is this is very very useful, and and I hope that the, even the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs, you know, uh, see a, see the value that you're uh, bringing with the diaspora uh, news. Guyana Diaspora News, um, you know, to, to disseminate their information and, and their mandate. So definitely, you know. All right, Salim. Thanks and yes. ha have a good afternoon. Thank yeah, you. you too.